Jonah, it's day three. What the heck? This thing's moving along quick. It's too early for this. There we go. Today's Friday, May 15th, and that means that it is my turn to respond to you. Jonah, thank you so much for responding yesterday. I really enjoyed watching your video, and that fried chicken sounds insane. I absolutely cannot wait for it. Also, I know we're brand new to this, but uh, come on now. You forgot to say your name in your own video. <laughs> I was like, is he, gonna, is he gonna do it? No, 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 he didn't do it. All right, well, Jonah everyone. First off, I just think it's super important to go ahead and acknowledge that indeed, I do not want you massaging me. And I think it's funny because like, you know, in the four years of us being business partners, there's been a lot of times where we accidentally sound like a couple and it's off-putting for sure. There was a time we got the white Volkswagen Bug convertible to drive around Florida. There's every time we go shopping, every time we go out to eat. We had to be careful about the way we say things because people are gonna start thinking we're dating. I don't think Crystal is gonna like that. So yeah, let's just focus on maybe the, the person who doesn't post a video has to uh, treat the other person to lunch or dinner or whatever. Now, Jonah, I'm like so on board with the whole outdoor gardening landscape thing right now. I I'm there for it. And I think a lot of people at home are too, because I know we're like cooped up at home. So it's nice to get outside and actually do something in the sun and with your hands. Um, I've done some regrading. I've moved a ton of soil. I've planted grass. I'm getting ready to put in some like new ornamental like bushes and shrubs and flowers and stuff like super excited. And that's really incredible that you're actually going to have a vegetable garden where you're going to be able to eat and sustain some of your like normal food needs off of a garden that you grow. And that's awesome. I wanted to do something similar. I have like all these wooded areas and I think I want to do like a forest garden. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but uh, pretty interesting. You should look it up. Now, Jonah, I know that between me and you, we have very different quarantine experiences. I mean, I don't have a family or kids or anything like that, so I know things are way, way different for you. By the way, side note, look at my hair right now. Last night I was watching Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, and I, I was like, oh my gosh, like if I just trimmed up my hair a little bit and I grew like a little like slight curly mustache, I'd look like Gary Oldman. There are way worse things than looking like Gary Oldman. Now, Jonah, everything you were talking about in terms of family reminded me of a podcast I actually listened to yesterday, right before I saw your video. And that was with Neil deGrasse Tyson on his show, Star Talk. And he had his 90 year old mother on. And it was incredible to listen to this woman talk about growing up in the 30s in Spanish Harlem in New York and talking about raising children. Between your video response yesterday and that podcast, it got me thinking about like how creativity is really fostered at home. And I know for me personally, I have incredible parents. I mean, they didn't just let me do whatever I wanted. They always challenged me to make sure it was something I was really passionate about, that I was gonna stick with it, that I had a plan. And they were always supportive. And I found that listening to that podcast and listening to you talk about your family really got me thinking about like, how has your creativity as a person been influenced by the people around you, especially your family? I know for me, it's like paramount. I've been an oddball and a weirdo my whole life. My parents have always just kind of let me march to the beat of my own drum, but they always held me accountable and always pushed me to try things that were more difficult and do things that were challenging, you know, like be a normal person who knows how to have a conversation without being too awkward. Turns out social grace is hard. But anyways, I just thought that that was a really interesting conversation that he had. I, I want you to check out that podcast. It's only like a half hour long. It's super good. And I just felt like there was so much to glean from as a parent of three different children in three different fields. I mean, she has Neil, who's an astrophysicist. She has a, uh, I think a son who's an artist and a daughter who I think is an author a writer, I believe. I just thought, man, if that doesn't sum up so much of the success I feel that like has been a part of my life, it's just been the support of people in in uh, allowing me to do things the way I do them. And in fact, there was actually somebody who a long, long time ago called me a factory of bad ideas. And it was that challenge that I wasn't allowed to be myself or have the ideas I have and that they were all bad that actually pushed me to even open up a business and go on on my own. Because I felt like, yeah, maybe everything I do is not 
the standard way of doing it and maybe it's not the best or fastest or most efficient, but it was my way and it worked and I wanted to live honestly to myself. And I think that that is a huge part of creativity. What do you think, Jonah? What's been the thing that's always unlocked your creative passion and momentum in your life? And that goes for you guys at home too. Is there like, do you feel like you had the support or was it actually the lack of support that drove you to try anyways? I, uh, I saw a really cool podcast with Joe Rogan and Rob Zombie where Rob Zombie talked about how everyone told him he couldn't do things and he did it just despite them. And I, I gotta be honest, there's a huge part of that for me too, where I know I've been told I was too young or I couldn't do things or I'd never make it. And those also really pushed me to be even more dedicated to being creative and doing things the way I thought they would work best for myself. I definitely know that when I feel blocked by somebody, it usually makes me want to do it more. And when I'm struggling, when I'm like struggling to find that passion and someone's supportive, it does help me like lift up and get more momentum. It's really interesting how delicate creativity is to cultivate and it's also crazy how easy it is to lose it and then have to revamp all of that energy again. But maybe that's a topic for another uh, check-in. For that, I think I'm gonna leave you with those thoughts. Let me know what you think. I, I would love to hear it. I actually know I've met your father. He's freaking awesome and he's a musician and that already gives me an inkling that he was very supportive. So I think I'm kind of sensing like a commonality in a lot of people who are able to harness creativity as a lifelong passion and career. And I think it always comes down to support and drive. So anyways, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I can't wait to see what you think. And for those of you at home, please let me know like what, what motivates you to get going at home. And did you have or did you not have that support from people in your life? And how did it help or hinder your ability to get that creative momentum going? All right, everybody, I'll check you later. Stay creative, stay safe. Thank you.